graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods beside me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son and daughter, and your, or your male or female slave, or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In the six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. This is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your mother and your father, and you may have a long life in the land which the Lord, your God, has given you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your, neighbor, covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block of Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles, but to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than the human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Be and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to Jesus Christ, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned the t- their tables. And to those who sold the doves, sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they became to believe the scripture And the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast for the for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them, would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. If you're a baseball fan, you know that this last week was the start of spring training for professional baseball. 30 teams over the course of the week started to play baseball again after the long winter break. And in playing the game, what's the purpose? To get back into the rhythm, right? Or to reestablish and focus on the fundamentals of the game. Now, I've never played baseball outside of, I've never played on a team. I've played softball a couple times, but usually that's like a barbecue or a men's event, right? Or you, you play for a little bit and then you go drink beer. <laughs> but I have not played professionally, but I know I have many friends who did play in college or in high school. And they say the best coaches that coach they ever had always stressed the fundamentals. The fundamentals over and over and over again. And so that's what they do. They field the ball, they catch the ball, they throw the ball, they swing the bat and get back into the rhythm 
because they know that in, in establishing the basic fundamental principles of baseball, they can become the best athletes they can be, the best team in the league. That's their goal. That's what they strive for. We, as Catholics and as Christians, are also in spring training called Lent. <laughs> and Lent is the perfect time to work on those fundamentals, to ask, okay, where have I slacked off? Where have I lost, you know, my focus? How do I need to better myself in the simple and, and basic ways so that I too can become the best, the best that God is calling me to be, my best self, Spring, spring training, is, Lent is our spring training. But we, we established the fundamentals, we looked at the fundamentals of the reading that we found, to, that we have today from Exodus. And it's a perfect reading for today because it talks about the, the Ten Commandments. And today we have our penance service. So it's the perfect reading. It's like God designed it to be so. And that's true because I didn't look at the readings when I, when I, I scheduled Dependence service. But to look at these Ten Commandments, these are the fundamentals of the moral and spiritual life. All the sins can really be placed, in, for the most part, into these ten categories. Because these Ten Commandments can actually be summarized in two great commandments that we hear Christ speak about in the Gospels. To love God with our whole heart, mind, and soul, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And so we look to these commandments as a means, as a way, as a guideline to the fundamentals of our faith, to live our faith well. So let's look at them. The first three have to do with God, they are the tablet, the first tablet. Establishing in harmony with God. So the first, of course, there you shall have no other gods before you, right? You, you should not carve graven idols and shapes. God is to be the first of your life, your first priority, your first love. The first and primary and prominent position in your heart. And why? Because everything comes from God. We exist because God holds us, in his, it holds us in existence by His love. We owe everything to the Lord. We belong to the Lord. God created us to love us and to fill us with His love and with the hope that we would love Him back. He gave us free will so that we could choose to love him back. So is God first in your life? To love God with your whole heart, mind, and soul. And then in loving God, you are able to love one another. Second is, y'all shall not use the Lord's name in vain. How do we use the name of the Lord? Do we use it casually or flippantly? But it's more than just misusing God's name. And the ancient understanding of that would be to not use God's name as like a spell or an incantation, right? If I say God enough times, he'll give me something. In a sense, don't try to manipulate God by calling upon him. You know, Lord, how many times do we bargain with God? If you give me this, I'll pray 10 Hail Marys. For an hour, every hour for the rest of my life. Yeah, right. I've made many deals with God and I've failed on all of them. How in our life are we trying to manipulate God? Instead of calling and using God's name to invoke his love, to invoke his presence, to honor and praise him. Third, to keep holy the Sabbath day. Our, as Christians, our Sabbath day is Sunday. For Jews, it was Saturday. But we, our rest day is the first day of the new creation, the first day of the week. 
is does your Sunday look different than the rest of your week? You have six days to work. On the seventh day you rest. There was a time in our country, in our culture, where there was something dramatically and and visibly different about Sunday compared to the rest of the week. Shops were closed. You know, places didn't open because 90% of our population believed in God in some form. There was something different. This is a time for the Lord that we set aside for the Lord to pray, to spend time with our family, to do works of charity. Does your Sunday look different than the rest of the week? Or is it just another day of the week? These first three, again, help us find harmony and right relation with God. And they're first for a reason. Because in order for us to love one another, we first have to love and be loved by God. Because He's the source of love. But when we look to each other, then we go into the next, the next seven. Honor your father and mother. Your father and mother brought you into this world. And even if you have a terrible relationship or a non-existent relationship, to at least acknowledge and honor the fact that they are the cause for your life. I was thinking about this myself, my own father. I never met my father. He passed away. He's actually buried in Fredonia. The only time I do a graveside service in Fredonia, I go and I say a prayer for my father. Never knew him. Didn't want anything to do with me, as far as I know. But I still honor and pray for him. Because without him, I would not be here. But the broader sense of that commandment is also honoring those who have right authority. Honoring our teachers our teachers and our coaches. Honoring even those who hold public office. Even if we do not like them, to honor and respect at least the office that they hold. And when we stand in opposition, as sometimes we do and must, to do it in a respectful way. Thou shalt not kill. God is the Lord of life. He is the one who ultimately has power over life and death. It is not our our place to choose. Sometimes we have to defend ourselves, yes. But our intent should never be to kill. But more than that, do I kill with my words? Do I speak ill of others? Do I think ill of others? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Do I live a chaste life in accord with my my status? Am I using the sexual act in a way proper to its end, which is to unite and love and to bring forth children for those men and women who are married to each other? That is the purpose the marital act. That's why we call it the marital act. Thou shall not steal. More than just taking others, do I respect others and their property? And in a very real way, this commandment has a deeper deeper root, uh, root in justice. The justice is giving those their due. Do I take something that is, that is due someone else? Do I steal what someone else has earned? Thou shalt not bear false witness. This is something that we struggle with in our culture today, especially. This mentality, this cancel culture that we find ourselves in. Check any social media and you will see this. That if I disagree with you, not only will I show my disagree, disagreement, but I am not, I'm going to destroy you. I will get you fired. I will ruin your reputation. I will ruin your life through lies and deceit. 
through the manipulation and corruption of truth. You know who else uses those those methods? Satan. Did God really say you couldn't eat of any of the trees in the garden? We, as Christians, as Catholic Christians, when we stand in opposition to someone who is spreading lies, we combat those lies with truth, not with further lies. Do I tell the truth, not just about, my, about myself, but about others? Do I covet my neighbor's wife and my neighbor's goods? There's a mentality that we have as humans that we could not want, care about anything, but sometimes when we find out that someone else likes it, then we want it. You know, look at any toddlers, right? A toddler could walk into a playroom and there could be a stack of toys that he didn't care anything about. But as soon as another toddler walks up and grabs a toy, oh, no, I want that. I want that. The parents, every mass I've said that, parents have gone, yep, yep, yep. Right? We've got a couple of our preschoolers teachers in here are probably thinking the same thing. To not covet does not say that you shouldn't desire something good. It says you shouldn't desire to take the good from your neighbor. Your, your neighbor gets a new car and you're like, that is a really nice car. There's nothing wrong with saying, I want to get a car like that. But do you say, I want your car. Your, your neighbor just got married and you're like, you have a beautiful spouse. There's nothing wrong with saying, I desire to get married. I desire to have companionship in this world and in this life. But, but it is wrong to say, I want your spouse. Instead, do we rejoice in the joy of others and their success? When one of us suffers, we all suffer. When one of us is exalted, we all share in their joy. These are the guidelines, the fundamentals of our moral life, of our spiritual life. This Lent is a perfect time as we prepare for our yearly confession, our, our bare minimum, at least once a year confession, to say, okay, am I living out these commandments, these fundamentals? How am I doing? Am I doing well? Am I not? Where do I need to grow? Where do I need to allow the Lord in to heal and strengthen and bring greater fulfillment in my life? What do I need to surrender to the Lord? I encourage you to take these commandments and pray about them. Examine them. In fact, there's some, there's some amazing examination of consciences out there that have the Ten Commandments and a breakdown of each of these commandments to help you meditate and think about it. Write it up. Write them down. Mark it up. Make a list. And then take that list into the confessional. Humble yourself before the Lord and His priest and let it all, lay it all out on the table. And then hear God's merciful voice say, I absolve you. Go in peace. And allow the healing of the sacrament to take place. Feel and experience the receiving of that love in a powerful and intimate way. And do that before you get into the confessional. Don't go into the confessional and kneel down and say, okay, commandment one. Where have I not, you know, done, you know, made God my only God? No, 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 no. Don't do your examination in the confessional. Do your examination in the pew before you go into the confessional. That's the more we dispose ourselves to the sacrament, the more God can work and heal us in our lives. So that we can, at the most basic and fundamental level, respond and to God's love and to love Him above all things. In everything we do, we love God with our heart, mind, and soul. 
And by loving God, we may love one another and love our neighbor as ourselves. For the Holy Church of God, that the Lord may graciously watch over her and care for her. Let us pray to the Lord. For the people of all the world, that the Lord may graciously preserve harmony among them. Let us pray to the Lord. That like the woman of Samaria, or elect, our elect may review their lives before Christ and acknowledge their sins. Let us pray to the Lord Our prayer. that they may be freed from the spirit of mistrust that deters people from following Christ. Let us pray to the Lord that while awaiting the gift of God, they may long that all their hearts for the living water that brings eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord that by accepting the Son of God as their teacher, they may become true worshipers of the Father in spirit and in truth. Let us pray to the Lord. That they may share with their friends and neighbors the wonder of their meeting with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. That those whose lives are empty for want of the word of God may come to the gospel of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord that all of us may learn from Christ to do the Father's will in love. Let us pray to the Lord for the petitions written in our parish prayer book, the protection of all those who are serving their country, for the people of our parishes, and all the intentions we now pause to pray. Let us pray to the Lord. God of power, you sent your Son to be our Savior. Grant these catechumens and candidates who, will, who like the woman, woman of Samaria, thirst for living water, may turn to, you, turn to the Lord as they, as, as they hear his word and acknowledge the sins and weaknesses that weigh them down. Protect them from vain reliance on self and defend them from the power of Satan. Free them from the spirit of deceit so that, admitting the wrong they have done, they may attain purity of heart and, the, and, and advance on the way to salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the foundation of for which they thirst. You are the master whom they seek. In your presence they dare to claim, claim to you, dare not to claim to be without sin, for you alone are, are the Holy One of God. They open their hearts to you in faith. They confess their faults. They lay bare their, their hidden, hidden wounds. In your love, free them from their infirmities, heal their sickness, quench their thirst, and give them peace. In the power of your name, which we call upon in faith, stand by them now and heal them. 
rule over that, that spirit of evil, conquered, conquered by your rising from the dead. Show your elect the way of salvation in the Holy Spirit, that they may come to worship the Father in truth. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Let the elect now, as you have come forward, receive the creed of the church. My dear friends, listen carefully to the words that the, that faith of that faith by which you will be justified. The words are few, but the mysteries they contain are great. Receive them with a sincere heart and be faithful to them. And I invite all present, join our catechumens and candidates as we recite together um, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I have no wind. I believe in the Holy Spirit. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for these elect, these catechumens and candidates, that God in his mercy may make them responsive to his love, so that through the waters of rebirth, they may receive pardon for their sins and have life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Lord, eternal source of light, justice, and truth, take under your tender care your servants your, who are to enter the church this Easter. Purify them and make them holy. Give them true knowledge, sure hope, and sound understanding, and make them worthy to receive the grace of baptism and, co and confirmation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Although you cannot yet per participate fully in the Lord's Eucharist, stay with us as a sign of our hope that all God's children will eat and drink with the Lord and work with His Spirit to co-create the face of the earth. Offertory.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take, may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with, with the joy of, of minds made pure, so that, more eagerly intent on prayer, and on the, on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offering and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we, we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. If before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become a lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to, to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things to himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of fame. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our, our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resur resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, 
We offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they, ga they may be grant gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us all always in communion of mind and heart, together with, your, your, together with Francis our Pope and Carl our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Say, Michael the Archangel, God, our protection against the wickedness. God, rebuke him, we humbly bow, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that, co that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in, in us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Said tonight we will have our, our penance service at 6 p.m. Father Mike Lineber will be here. Father Dan Lormer will be here. Father Dan informed me as I asked him. Uh, he's comfortable hearing confessions in Spanish. So if you know anybody who speaks Spanish, the first language, tell him to come to him. But uh, we'll figure it out. Um, but also... We are not going, we are going to continue our 4 to 8.30 um, adoration. Uh, and so when you come in, just come in and kneel down and pray. Uh, just have that respectful um, um, quiet when you come into the church. And then at 6 o'clock, I'll step out. We'll do some prayer, uh, a prayer. We'll do a prayer, a brief prayer service and then an act of contrition. Um, and then the lines will form. The lines will be open. So, you know, Father Dan's line will be here, Father Mike's line will be here, and then, of course, I'll be in the confessional in the back. Uh, so know that, yes, we are having a penance service, even if you're like, well, adoration is going on. Also, we are having at 2 o'clock our video series. If you haven't already watched that with your family or intend to watch it with your family, um, and that, of course, will be at 2 with discussion, and then actually we'll come over here and do some adoration connected to that as well. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you, remain with you forever. Go in peace. of Jesus Savior who died freely A living water thirsty one stooped down and drank I came to Jesus and I drank of that life giving stream First was quenched my soul 